God Lives Underwater. They've just released their debut full-length album. It's called Empty. They've gotten attention for both their unique brand of technologically molded guitar rock and their arresting live show. In fact, singer David Riley was recently incarcerated for inciting a riot at one gig. But really, they're just nice small town boys from, uh, where, well, what is that place called again? Huh? Perky Omenville. It's like, uh, now we're outside of Philadelphia. Population um, 400. Like. About 400 people live there. We lived totally out in the woods, like, hardly any houses were even near us, and like, you know, in my school, I was the only kid in my school that listened to, like, alternative music in the entire school, and, uh, got all kinds of problems because of that, too. Me and Jeff met each other because we were probably the only young kids that, you know, skated and made music and, like, you know, good bands. So what were all the other kids doing? Fighting or beating kids up or whatever else. Or Aerosmith. But the God Lives Underwater Boys just stayed home and played. We didn't We didn't go to parties and drink beer. <laughs> we stayed home and played with gear. And yeah, learned how to make music. And record music since we were like, what, probably 15. Yeah. We were just as much into recording as like we are today. Like even from like our first demos, we always had to try and have our home demos sound like a record. You know, we weren't satisfied with anything less than that. Like, we had to learn whatever we could to make our gear sound good. And we kind of learned, like, uh, programming and, uh, you know, like making sounds and sequencing and recording and mixing and songwriting all at the same time. And we picked up how to play a few instruments too, both play guitar and drums and keyboards, you know, sing. As David and Jeff tell us, they feel their songs are traditional rock songs. They like to use the latest technology, but they're not a techno band. I think that the only reason people would perceive us as techno is because maybe we, we spend time programming and, and we try and be creative with the way that our record sounds, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's techno. I mean, you know, we just happen to get into our gear as much as people who make techno do. As I think all musicians should. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what? If you were to take out the guitars and vocals, it would sound like techno sometimes. But uh, that's why we're not a techno band, because we like guitars and vocals. Still, even they are a little confused about where to draw the line. Had we grown up differently, we might have had the same songs with uh, just guitars and drums. Yeah, probably not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They see their enthusiasm for technology as pretty normal. It was really just a question of necessity. Well, they made it, tried to make it look in our bio like we use this incredibly innovative new system, which is like we do our records the same way probably a million other people in the United States alone do it. I don't know? really know anyone that doesn't do their records like that. Yeah. Cutting edge. Whew. These guys are geniuses. <laughs> pioneers. <laughs> yeah, pioneers. <laughs> The biggest reason why we started using break beats and drum machines is because we didn't, we couldn't afford uh, to have the volume of a live drummer at our house, and like, uh, and and the best sounding stuff to tape when you just had a mixing board and a cassette deck is, you know, with no multi-track to have a sequencer and some keyboards, you know. And then uh, once we started getting more gear, we just wanted to have guitars, and you know, we we did the whole opposite spectrum. We played in live bands too, and then. It just went back to the way it was. We just liked it with uh, all the programming, too. But when it all comes down to it, they're a rock band, even if they don't let the drummer and the guitar player play on the records. I mean, I think that we're just a rock band. I mean, when it comes right down to it on stage, we look like a rock band, we sound like a rock band. We have a drummer and another guitar player live, but we played everything on the record and, and, and wrote everything except for one song we co-wrote with Andrew. But not to say that we won't work with them in the studio, but it's going to be... A, a hump to get over to work in, you know, with other people that way because we've been working together for so long and it's kind of a, a machine groove, you know. I, I don't think we see that a lot in, in a lot of other groups or other people, so I think we decided, you know, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. So we just kept on doing things the way we were doing things. But I mean, they're definitely still a part of our band. It's not like that they're two hired hands or anything. I mean, we've been with them for like two years now, too. And it definitely, I mean, we feel like a band. We're definitely a band, regardless of whether they yeah. play on the record or not. <laughs>